Dr. Zev Williams and his team have developed a rapid test that gives a result in just 30 minutes. I think the challenge that we have with coronavirus is that it is a fundamentally different type of virus. And so the testing strategy that we need in order to be able to defeat it has to also be fundamentally different. This is a virus that we know in a significant percent of the cases where it's being spread, it's actually being spread through patients who are completely asymptomatic and feeling well. We need to do testing at a very widespread level to test a large part of the population and to test frequently and to get the results back quickly. If you find out that somebody had the virus, but it takes three or four days to get the results, it's really more of a historical record than actionable information. You need to be able to identify the patient on the spot so that you can quarantine and do contact tracing. Existing rapid tests need a high complexity lab setting to be processed. Therefore, it has proven difficult to scale up to meet demand and the backlog means results are not processed as quickly as they could be. The specialist equipment needed has also made it difficult to deploy in the field. We were able to improve the ability to detect the virus so much that you don't have to first do a step where you extract the RNA from it. And that was really a fundamental shift in how we started to view the way that the testing had to be done. What we tried to do in our test is to make everything based on the chemistry. So the enzymes and the chemistry do all the work. And as soon as you get the work down to the level of chemistry and enzymes, it becomes much, much easier to scale, to ship, to transport, and to make this as massively available as is necessary. So the technology really comes from Columbia University Fertility Center. One of the things that we've been doing a lot is developing very rapid point of care genetic testing. We realized a lot of the tools and the thinking and the insights that we've gained over the years could be applied to this challenge. It is kind of amazing for the whole research team to think that a lot of the technology that we've been working on to help bring life into the world is now being applied to trying to save lives. Tell me how it works. So the way the method works is you take a small amount of saliva, really just a couple of drops, and you put it into a tiny tube that's pre-filled with all the chemicals and enzymes and reagents that you need. You take that tube and you put it into a simple heat block and you let it sit there for 30 minutes. You take it out, you put it on ice and you look at it. And if the tube is yellow, it means the sample is positive. There is COVID-19. And if the tube is red, it means the sample is negative. There's no COVID-19 there. What exactly is in the cocktail of chemicals for the test? The basic things that it has on the test is chemicals that cause the virus, which is in a little particle, it causes that virus to open up so that the nucleic acid comes out and can be exposed. And then it has enzymes that take that nucleic acid and convert it from RNA, because coronavirus is an RNA virus, into DNA, which we can amplify. And then it has enzymes that amplify that DNA. That's the core part of it. The other big component to what's in the cocktails you put in are all these different inhibitors to try to prevent the enzymes from degrading it and other factors to prevent us from getting false positive and false negative signals. And so that's all sort of put together in this one little tube, along with some reagents that allow you to see a positive and negative result. So how accurate is your technology? So right now we can pick up one to two copies of the virus in every microliter of saliva. In many cases of people who are actually symptomatic, the levels could be in hundreds or even thousands of copies or tens of thousands of copies per microliter. So the test is able to pick up very low levels of the virus. We've been doing large panels of testing and so far the accuracy is over 97%. So what's so special about your technology is the fact that it provides results in a very short space of time. So we needed a test that could be done in the field. People will have to be tested frequently. So whatever we test can't be too uncomfortable or painful for the person. I need to get the results back quickly so you can say, yes, you're safe to enter this area. You're safe to board this long flight or you know you can't enter this area. This test is currently going through its approval process and they hope it will be available later this year. This test and other new rapid tests that are being developed could be the key to help safely reopen the economy, being used in schools, care settings, hospitals and workplaces. The ability of the test to save lives comes from its ability to test people before they're symptomatic 
and before they're starting to spread it to others. And by identifying those people and being able to put them into quarantine and do contact tracing, you can actually prevent the spread to those who are susceptible and at risk and to the larger public. If you can contain this virus, it's not alive. It can't reproduce on its own. It needs us to spread it to each other. And so we need to find out who are the people that are at risk for spreading it. And that's how we can stop the virus in its tracks.